friendships are really changing and because of that there's a lot of friendship breakups there's a lot of friendship heartbreaks five years something can change ten years something can change six months a friendship can change you're entering into a commitment with someone that you never expect a breakup to happen from waters of your friendship life are looking murky it's not still it's not still clear, stagnant. Listen, you can see from the top of the water right to the bottom, the bottom of the, the pool. It's not like that anymore. I'm calling, but you ain't. I'm texting, but you ain't. I'm trying to make plans. Every time I try to make plans, something comes up. I can advise if they ask for the advice, number one. But if they do not ask for the advice and they are just talking, Respect that boundary. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. It is me, it is Katle Malela. Thank you so much for joining me today. As always, I appreciate you. Thank you for choosing me each and every single day over and over again. Thank you for all the time and effort that you spend on this channel. Thank you for your comments and thank you for supporting the channel in the way that you can. I genuinely do really appreciate it, but I am so fixed on having this conversation with you guys today and this is a real talk video as you can see from the title down below it is friendships as adults and i think it's really really important to have this conversation i did one for the introvert i'm okay with me series where i spoke about friendships especially trying to start a new friendship or maintain friendships as an introvert but i think it would apply to extroverts and ambiverts as well so if you want to check out that video it is currently on my channel now you can watch this one first or watch the other one but i really want us to get into this conversation today let's do a real talk a real deep dive into what is happening with friendships as adults how do we maintain friendships as adults and why are there so many friendship breakups that I'm seeing online of people talking about how their friendship is over, the breakup happened, it's harder than any other relationship that they have had or any other engagement that they have had with anyone else. Friendship breakups are always the hardest. But let's get into why. Why is it so difficult to be friends as adults? Let's get into the video, okay? But the first thing that I want us to do is to watch this particular video, which I think was the catalyst for me making this video. I haven't spoken about friendships on my channel in a while. Um, I think I may have done a couple of videos. I've got a lot of videos on my channel, so I may have done a couple of videos before then, but because I spend a lot of time on TikTok for my work and also just to create content, to get ideas and things like that, there is one particular video that I saw that was done by a therapist that I want us to watch together and you will see me react to it, but I want us to watch it together and then we will get into the conversation of friendships and especially friendships as adults. Shall we get What is a friendship lesson that you've had to learn the hard way as an adult? Mine is- As a therapist that works with a lot of clients in their late 20s and early 30s, I continue to see this theme a lot. A consequence of developing and getting older is grieving relationships and friendships that you thought would last for a lifetime. And this happens because you experience a personal shift in your values. You're gaining a deeper understanding of yourself how you want to spend your time and maybe in your early 20s you just want to have a good time you just want to do it for the plot and your friends were there for that that's what you needed in that era of your life but as you grow older your values are shifting you might start craving deeper connections you might start developing hobbies you might start wanting relationships based off of shared experiences career aspirations people that are starting families people that are just in a similar stage in life that you are and this is where it can get really challenging because the old friendships that you're clinging on to are likely rooted in the values of your past self and so you can do one of two things you can try to fit yourself back into the old mold to keep the friendship alive or you can try to impose your newfound values on your friends and hope that they grow in the same capacity that you have. And neither one of those options are really fair to you or your friendships. Trying to revert back to your old self is gonna deny you the growth that you have earned and then trying to push your friend to be someone that they're not ready to become or maybe never will become will create resentment. It's truly like trying to fit a square peg into a round hole. It doesn't fit and it's not supposed to fit and that's okay. 
Okay. I really, really enjoyed that uh, TikTok because I feel like she emphasized a lot of things with regards to adult friendships and how friendships evolve over the years and how you get into friendships with people maybe in your early 20s and your values and belief systems and things like that change. Therefore, because they change, it might feel like for you, you are moving forward and moving towards something. You're at a certain point in your life. You're getting married. You're having a child, all of this. And that friendship that started in its 20s was basically, basically rooted in the fact that you guys are going out a lot. You're spending time together. You're doing this. But now you realize that you're 35. And if you're 35, 32, you realize that your value systems are very different. You are now focused on work. Now you are in a long term committed relationship that person isn't that person is bouncing around dating around bouncing around from man to man woman to woman person to person and here you are in a solid stable relationship there's certain things that are going to be very different for you and your friendship going forward that's why sometimes you get people who do not understand how is it that you are friends with this person like you guys are so different right and even you at the core of your being, you do realize that we are actually quite different. We are actually quite different. But this is my friend and you are holding on to what once was in that friendship at that time, right? You are holding on to what once was, the enjoyment that you have, uh, you had, the shared experiences that you had, all the moments and the memories that you've made together, forgetting that even though you may have made them at that time, things have now changed. Five years, something can change. 10 years, something can change. Six months, a friendship can change. So I really loved that TikTok. I was like, yes, 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 yeah. Tick, 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 tick. She's absolutely right. So I wanted to get into it that what happens to friendships when you become adults and you and your friends are completely different because what is also quite prevalent in social media and based on what I watch with regarding to friendships and things like that is friendships have become they're going through this really transformative place or transformative energy in life where friendships are really changing and because of that there's a lot of friendship breakups there's a lot of friendship heartbreaks there's a lot of friendships distancing. There's a lot of things that are happening that are distancing friends from people that they never thought that they would distance themselves for, from. And the craziest thing is also for women, especially for women, it's so difficult to lose a friendship because they become the emotional backbone of your life. You know what I'm saying? They become that emotional standpoint for you. Your friendships with your female friends, especially if you're a female watching this, uh, your friendships with your female friends become that safe haven. It's almost like entering into a friendship with that person like a marriage, but never expecting divorce. You know what I'm saying? Very, very... Mm, the arguable analogy, but think about it in the sense that you are entering into a commitment with someone that you never expect a breakup to happen from. And I don't think that it's a conversation that is had enough on social media that, you know, we get taught everywhere that, you know, when you go through a relationship breakup, you know, this is what you should do. You know, don't focus on this, don't block them, delete them. But there's not much... Um, conversation around what should you do with a friendship breakup, especially one that you never thought would come to an end. And I think the big starting point to that would be you would have to address and look at friendships as adults as a whole, that certain things do change, systems change, life changes, values change, belief systems change. Therefore, there might be things that happen within those friendships that change over time. And we become so hard on ourselves because we think to ourselves that, no, but I want us to be friends forever. I want to be friends forever, okay? And you realize that as much as that is what you would want, is it something that is viable and feasible for you and your friend at the current state of life that you are both in? 
because you're not always going to be at the same place in life. One will be married, one won't. One will be in a relationship, the next one won't. One ha will have children or a child, the next one won't. I have friends, all my good friends, which I can count on one hand, all my good friends have children and I don't. <laughs> and it's by choice, right? It's by choice. It's not like, oh my God, it didn't work out for me. I could have a kid right now if I wanted to, but I just don't want to. So now, very different parts of life. Some are married. I'm not. Some are, you know, traveling the world. We're doing whatever. Some are in different parts of the world. I'm not. I'm here. So things are very different. Right. And then there's just things that friends are typically going through internally that will cause some sort of not particularly a rift, but it'll cause some sort of dynamic shift within the friendship. And I think that these are the things that aren't really discussed. It's just like, oh, my God, we broke up. We're no longer friends anymore. They've distanced themselves from me. I don't know what's going on. I don't quite get this. Somebody please make it make sense. Right. And I think it's one of the things that need to be discussed as to friendships as adults. And I'm saying adults like, listen, I'm mentioning it past 25 at this point. This this I'm talking to the people who are past 25 and the friendships and what they mean to us and how they change over time. So one of the things that I realized is that friends or people also struggle to maintain long-term friendships. Not everybody gets to have a long-term friendship with their friends. All the friends that I have, all of them are long-term uh, friendships. The newest friendship that I have is two years old. Everything else is above two years, 10 years, 15, seven, five, that kind of thing. All of them are long-term friendships. Have some changed over the years in terms of the dynamic of the friendship? Absolutely. Things will happen. Things will have to be discussed. Conversations will have to be had. Moments will be shared. Good moments, bad moments. Uh, but also growing up means that you get to a point where you have to have difficult conversations with your friends. Either you have to hold them accountable. Either you have to tell them how they made you feel. Either you will have to distance yourself from them for a little bit of time because you are currently going through something that you just don't want to impose on them, but you just need that space as well from your friend to figure it out. I go through many moments with my friends with thing, things like this, where I will not talk to them for two weeks sometimes. I will not talk to them for, no, not a month, a month is too long, but I will not talk to them for like two weeks, three weeks, maybe even five days from us talking every day to now we're not talking and we haven't spoken in a week or two. That's fine. That's okay. Life happens and we also need to learn how to respect each other's boundaries. But I've realized that there's become a, a really, it's hard to explain, but I think it, there's, there's a really big pull to trying to understand why friendships end, why they become such a big dynamic shift or division with friends or people that you have known for so long and now things are just really looking murky. The waters of your friendship life are looking murky. It's not still, it's not still clear, stagnant. Listen, you can see from the top of the water right to the bottom, the bottom of the, the pool. It's not like that anymore. And I think it's very hard to reconcile with yourself that how did we get here? And let's talk about that. How do you get to those certain positions with your friends? Time. One of the biggest things is time. As adults, studies have been made that you can, there was a study that was done in the Netherlands and the States where people wanted to see how, how you can, the, 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 the researchers wanted to see how you can engage what groups of people can people best engage and best formulate friendships from? Large groups, small groups, uh, um, pairs or trios or quartets or things like that, right? So this study was done and in grown-up adult friendships, the friendships that seem to work the best are friendships in, of pairs because it's really difficult to devote time to trying to get four people together or trying to get five people together because we all got things going on 
Okay, some of us are working and studying. Some of us are marriage, children, got to pick up the kids from school. Now the kids got a play date, so we can't meet on Saturday. Now this, this is going on. Now the, the kid is not feeling well, so we can't meet. Whereas when it's just two people trying to plan something, it's easier for that plan to come to fruition if it's between two people. If it's between five, it's very, very difficult for you to get five people in one space without there being a little bit of back and forth. Oh no, I can't do this weekend. Can we move it to that weekend? Oh no, I can't do this weekend. So time is a huge thing that is a big contributor to why certain friendships fail because someone will devote time into your friendship with them They'll devote a lot of time into your friendship with them and feel like you're not devoting enough time. They try, they are always just, you know, doing their thing, trying to make time for the friendship. They are calling, they are texting, making sure that you're okay. I haven't spoken to you in a couple of days. Uh, making time as well as making effort. One of the things that causes a friendship breakdown as well is lack of effort. And as an adult, I don't have time to engage someone who's not going to give me the amount of effort that I give them, right? The amount of effort that I devote into the friendship. So I'm calling, but you ain't. I'm texting, but you ain't. I'm trying to make plans. Every time I try to make plans, something comes up. Every time I do this, something comes up. That's enough to make any person get tired or frustrated with trying to put effort into any kind of friendship. We forget that, you know, people put so much effort into their intimate and romantic partnerships that it's almost overlooked that a, a friendship is just as important as a relationship. It is a form of a relationship that you have with somebody. So why can you make that time for your lover right and you can make that time for your intimate relationships but every single time that your mate is trying to hook up with you for this that or the other blah 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 do this that there's always something that comes up i can't make it okay it's okay to say you can't make it you don't even have to explain why we're grown-ups here we're adults if you can't make it that's fine if your friend is going to mention it again two weeks later that guys we said that we were going to meet up what's going on then this other time, the other friend is like, yo, Jens, now I can't, whatever. The one who's always making the planning, I'm that friend. The one who's always making the planning, who's always saying, guys, when I'm going to meet up, guys, calling, texting, this, 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 blah, blah, blah. And then you realize, you start to realize that, okay, it seems like I'm the one putting in all the effort. It's enough to distance yourself. Eventually, at some point, you realize that I can't do this. And there becomes that silent break in the friendship it just it just happens and you both know it's knowingly it's happening you're seeing it it's happening in real time but you're just like mm, mm. you know what i'm saying that's that's another thing okay another big thing lack of respecting boundaries now you can be a mirror to your friend Okay, you can be a mirror to your friend, make them see things about themselves that they don't see. It, speak about that, engage in that, hold them accountable, all of this. But there's also a lack of boundaries. I feel like you as a friend need to understand that just because you would behave a certain way with regards to a certain situation that your friend might be going through. So you, Ditebo are going through this right now and I'm your friend and I talk to you and I say no but why did you do this blah 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 you know blah 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 or you make underhanded comments or you don't really attribute it to me but maybe I'm watching you I'm watching what you're sharing online what you're reposting what you're whatever and I feel like you're indirectly subtweeting me here because this is something that I've told you about you know what I'm saying or I've, I've done whatever it's a violation of a certain kind of boundary, right? So if you can tell your friend that this is what I'm going through, this is what I'm doing, this is blah, 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 your friend doesn't have to give you any answers. If I come to you as your friend and I vent about something that I'm currently going through, 
You, as the friend, will understand from your level of perception. You would listen to that story and automatically, almost instantaneously, think about how you would behave in that situation. Yet you forget, you are you, you're not me. So if I respond differently, and I say to, no, I, I mean, I'm hearing your chats, <laughs> but I still want to be with this person. I still want to go on this trip. Yes, I'm broke. Yes, they don't suggest that you solo travel to a certain country. I want to do it anyway. So just because you don't want to do it doesn't mean that your friend should react the way that you react and then get upset at them for not doing so. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's an invasion of boundaries. And I feel like you need to understand as the friend that there's certain boundaries I shouldn't cross. I can advise if they ask for the advice, number one. But if they do not ask for the advice and they are just talking, respect that boundary. Respect the fact that they just want to talk to you about this. So a lot of friends break certain boundaries. And again, it creates that silent distancing from your mate where you realize that, okay, every time I talk to this person, they, they disrespect the boundary. I've created a boundary about what I expect. I have expectations for my friendships. I've created that boundary. And if they keep breaking it or if they keep disrespecting it, if they keep doing that, then you realize that's your cue for you to see that, okay, many times have my boundaries been broken here and people then silently remove themselves from that, right? Another big thing, trauma dumping. Now, trauma dumping is a huge thing that happens between friendships. So you can talk about your family every time you call your friend. You are telling them about what your mother did and this and this every time. You're not calling them about, hey, what's going on? How are you doing? I haven't spoken to you in a minute. Are you okay? Just wanting to know about what's happening with them. No, no, no. Every single time you call them, you're calling them about a story. You're calling them about something and I'm guilty of this. And I can understand how sometimes my friends might want to take a step back from me because maybe I'm calling them because I'm, I'm stressed out at work or I've got uh, uh, professional uh, work pressures and I'm, 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 I'm just worried about A, B, C, Z, blah, blah, blah. It's fine. Maybe they might want to distance themselves from me because it's a lot. If they are also going through their own thing, it's a lot. But then if that becomes what your whole friendship centers around, trauma dumping, chances are quite large, 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 that the friendship will fail. Because that should not be the only thing that binds you together as friends. It's unhealthy to trauma, trauma dump on a relationship with an intimate partner, but it's also very unhealthy to trauma dump on a relationship with friends. Very, very big thing. And then lastly, maybe why a lot of friendships fail, lack of communication, huge, huge. Let's, let's watch this for a second. There's another one that I saved. Here we go. If you have a friend who's bothering you and you don't tell her, you are the bad friend. You and your friend are two different people from two different backgrounds with two different personalities and two different expectations of what a friend means. When you have a problem with a friend and you don't tell her because you think she should know that's annoying, she should know that's rude, you're wrong. You should tell her so then she knows. And then if she does it again, once you've told her, then we can talk. But until you tell her you are the bad friend, you're expecting your friend to read through your mind. And until that time, you build up resentment towards your friend and you don't give your friend a chance to fix what's bothering you. And a lot of times the sad thing is it's a very, very minor thing. Because you don't tell her, it stays inside you and it hurt you a little bit. And so that hurt, which your friend meant no harm from, builds up and builds up and builds up. You build resentment towards a friend and it's not her fault. It's yours because you didn't have the strength to get it off your chest and be freaking real with your friend. Right? So one of the biggest things is communication. So this girl just keeps saying, tell her. If, if you don't, if you have an issue, tell her. Communication. Even if 
it's no issue. But just communicate so that you can show your intentionality when it comes to the friendship. So not only communicate, but have intentionality to communicate with your friend. And if you cannot do that, that's already a big sign that the friendship is going to struggle. It's going to go through some uh, periods of struggle. And that, again, will encourage that silence distancing. Because if there's one friend who's always really good at communication, who's good at touching base, who's good at making effort, who's good at doing this, that, and the other, and they feel like they are the one that are, that is are pulling the weight, that is pulling all the weight in the friendship, then you're going to have a problem. Because that person is going to feel like, I'm giving so much of myself to this friendship, but I feel like it's not coming together. What is the problem? Where did we go wrong? How can I do this? But lack of communication is a huge, huge, huge indicator of a relationship that is bound, doomed to fail. If you do not communicate, if you do not let people, you cannot, uh, gents, you cannot expect people to guess. People can't sit here and do guesswork about no, this, no, this is how you feel about this, no, okay, so it probably means I may have said this. If you have an issue with something, communicate it. I'm very good at communicating issues with my friends. Whatever issues that I have with them at the time, I'm good at communicating my issues with them at the time. Are they good at communicating with me? I don't know. They're a bit, they're a bit touch and go with that. Do you know what I mean? Uh, there is one friend of mine that's very good at communicating with me um, when she is feeling some type of way about something that I have done. And I'll give you an example. I won't say her name, <laughs> but um, one day she found out something that I hadn't told her. And it's something that links us both together. That is part of our connection. And she found out and I hadn't told her because one, I was kind of protecting her only to then realize at the end of the day that I wasn't protecting her. What I did, my lack of telling her actually hurt her. But what she did was she called me. The moment she found out she was at work, she called me, she said, listen, are you home after work? I'm like, yeah. And she's like, how are you in I'm like, nope, not going to Mjols. What's going on? No, I need to talk to you about something. I just found something out. I need to talk to you. And I instantly knew. And I was on pins and needles the whole day. I thought that this woman is going to leave me. <laughs> she going to divorce me. <laughs> I was certain. I was certain. Immediately after work, I got home sharp right here in this here house. I got home. She told me I'm leaving work. I'm coming. She gets here. She sits next to the couch. And I think one of the first things she says was, why didn't you tell me? And I already knew what it was. So I did not say, what are you talking about? What do you mean? I didn't. I said, I didn't tell you because ABC. And then she made me realize that the fact that you didn't tell me is what hurts me the most. I talk to you every day. You were sitting with this information and you didn't tell me. And I felt like trash when she said that because I was like, you know what? If I were in her position, I'd want to know too. So, communication, right? I disrespected a boundary of hers at that point. It wasn't intentional, but I really disrespected a boundary of hers and we had to work on it going forward, right? Now we, now we like this, we like this, we're untouchable, we're untouchable. And she came at me that time and I came at her last week because that's the thing. As friends, you do it, you just do it. As much as the conversation might be so difficult, but you just do it. And I feel like those are some of the reasons why friendships really seem to fail. And I'm thinking to myself, because there was another second part to this video that I wanted to do that I think might have to be a part two here. Yeah. Yeah. It might have to be a part two. So let's see how you guys enjoy this video. Listen, if you do enjoy it and you want me to do the second part of the video where I talk about how you can sustain, especially long-term friendships, how you can actively work on your friendships, what you can do to work on your friendships to actually keep them and sustain them, grow them in strength and in value and 
all of that, then let me know. So you will let me know. I will do that second part to this video, but it will depend on how this one does. So if you guys engage in this one, share this video, repost it, do the absolute most, whatever you feel comfortable doing, I would love for you to uh, support, definitely support. Um, and if you like this video and you want just those, those, that second part of the Real Talk video where we talk about what you can do, some of the things that you can do. And I love the fact that I integrate TikTok videos into these kinds of videos because I like to talk around those pointers as well. It's, it becomes so much more easier for me to filter my thoughts out coherently when I am listening to someone speak and I respond to them. So if there are any other videos that you want me to talk about in maybe a real talk or a candid with cat or an unpopular opinion or a reaction, I wanted to do a whole reaction video series thing, but there were not enough people that were sending me things to react to. And I thought, okay, well, that's not going to fly. Then I'm not going to just create content in J. You know, I, I rely on a lot of engagement from you guys when it comes to creating my content um, for my thoughts and my opinions, which is something you guys seem to enjoy. So if there are things that you do see on TikTok or whatever, please DM me those videos or send me that link or whatever. Instagram, uh, whatever's trending in the world, whatever, and you want me to talk about it, let me know that I would like you to react to this particular video. Friendships and in the adulting space is really, really difficult. And I think that friendships change over time as you grow. There are certain friendships that'll mean more. And I think we need to talk about hierarchy in friendships. I think one thing that people do not talk about in friendships is hierarchy. There are friendships that friends that you're going to give 100% of your time, energy, effort to because it's reciprocated. And you're going to share certain things with that person that you're not going to share with your other friend. It doesn't mean that that person, it's not a friend. It just means there's an evolution in hierarchy when it comes to your friends. Some friends you will be closer to because of what you've experienced, what you've shared, the amount of effort and time that they put into the friendship as well, the amount of, you know, conflict how good your conflict management is with each other as friends, they will be higher up on the totem pole in terms of your intimacy with them and your belief in them and the friendship. And then there are certain friends that, you know, you just key key with, you know what I'm saying? You, don't, you know that there's certain things that you're just not going to share with them. You've tried sharing it with them before. Now you realize that more than anything, if I share something like this with you, I feel judged, man. I feel whatever. So you pull back from sharing that particular space or part of your life, but you don't mind hanging out with them because they're wonderful people. So you don't mind hanging out with them. You don't mind having a good time with them, but there's certain things, hierarchy. That's something we can talk about, but definitely when it comes to what you can do, when it comes to your long-term friendships or your friendships to sustain them, to grow them, um, to make them stronger. Let me know if you want to see that video. I think the hierarchy one, I do have a video on it. Maybe we'll close out with that one. If you enjoyed this video, thank you so much. Like the video, share it, repost it, do the absolute most. I really would appreciate that. I have a coaching session in the next 20 minutes, so I need to go. Thank you so, so much for choosing me as always, all the time, over and over again. If you like this video, please like it. Please subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to get this channel to 40,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And wow, we are moving at snail's pace. At this point, I don't know what's going on. But thank you to everybody who is watching, who is subscribed. If you want to be a member, just so that you can support my channel that little bit more, I really would appreciate that as well. Um, yeah, and I'll see you guys in the next video. I hope this helped. Until then, I'll see you soon. Say it on. Why friendship breakups happen is because we are miscategorizing our friends. In order for friendships to work, it needs to be reciprocal. The same level of effort that you're giving, they need to reciprocate. And you can't be calling someone a best friend or a close friend if they're not treating you like a best friend or a close friend. And I've made this mistake where I considered someone a best friend when they were treating me as an acquaintance all along. I'd be the one giving them frequent communication. I'd be the one reaching out. I'd be the one setting up plans. I'd be the one constantly trying to text them, trying to call them, sending them memes, sending them TikToks, like whatever it was, I was constantly trying to communicate with them. 
And on top of that, I was very highly emotionally invested with them. When they would call me and they're crying and they're trying to deal with something that's going on in their life, I was the friend that was supportive. I would listen, I would be there, I'd be on the phone with them for hours. And that's why I called them my best friend because I treated them like a best friend, but they never did the same. Their communication was often very iffy if it was even there at all. Most of the time they would go months ghosting me, not reaching out, not contacting me. And anytime I needed to talk to them about something that was going on in my life, they were not emotionally invested. It would either flip to the conversation where they're talking about themselves and their problems or completely dismiss what I'm saying and minimize it completely and tell me like, oh, it's going to be fine. You'll, you'll be fine. You'll just have to get over it. This person that I considered a best friend was giving me infrequent communication and low emotional investment. They should have been called an acquaintance rather than a best friend in my mind. And that is why you end up getting hurt because you are miscategorizing your friends in the wrong sections. So pay attention to the level of effort that you're giving them as well as whether or not it's being reciprocal. In my last video, I go in depth on these four quadrants here, but it's important to pay attention of what this other person is giving you and what you're giving them and seeing if it's on the same energy level before you categorize them as a best friend and a close friend. Because most of the time we are considering low maintenance friendships that are acquaintances, ones that rarely communicate and rarely put in any emotional investment they're not the type of people that you will call up for support if something tragic happened. And they're also not the kind of people that you will call up if something amazing happened. Pay attention to how you treat them and how they treat you. Sometimes you might consider someone a best friend when they are treating you like you're an acquaintance. Love you guys. I hope this helps. <laughs>